Hey everyone, it's me, the Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man! Let's watch all the Cool School episodes about superheroes, especially Drew Pendis. He's my hero! Now let's go! And now it's time for another exciting adventure of Drew Pendis and his mighty pen ultimate! This time, Super Drew will battle the monster under the bed. It all started one evening when Drew's nightlight went out. Drew was trying really hard to be brave, but then he heard a noise. Ah! Drew hid under the covers. If there's any monsters out there, you better get out. I mean it. Ah! Wait a second. The stupendous Drew Pendus isn't afraid of the dark. Drew grabbed his pen ultimate and began to sketch. First, he drew some night vision goggles. Cool. It was kind of dark in here. Next, I'll need a cape so these monsters know that they're dealing with a real superhero. And I'll need a belt that can eject a net for monster capture. OK, monsters, you better hide, because I'm Super Drew, and I'm coming for you. Drew decided he should save his family first. So he flew into his little brother's room and shined a light under the bed. His little brother woke up. Hmm. Hey, Drew. What are you doing in here? I'm fighting monsters. Shh. <laughs> monsters? <laughs> Suddenly, Drew heard a noise. It was coming from down the hall. Drew jumped out, and he cast his net. Gotcha. Oops. Turned out it was just his pet schnauzer, Mr. Hot Dog. Sorry, Mr. Hot Dog. OK, no monsters here. Drew flew down the hall to his parents' room, but he didn't see any monster activity there. Hmm, the monsters seem to be one step ahead of me. Or maybe they're all hiding because they're scared. Drew plugged in a super monster deflector nightlight for his parents before he left, just to be safe. Huh? It was getting late, and Drew knew he had to defeat the monsters before morning. He flew through the house, casting his monster net and yelling really loudly so the monsters knew he meant business. Ah! He looked in the kitchen. Aha! No monsters. He looked in the garage. Ah! Nope. He looked in his closet. Nothing there except a mess. But where else was he supposed to throw all his toys? Drew threw back the curtains and yelled. Aha! But there was nothing there either. It was time to be brave and look under the bed, the most notorious hideout for monsters. Super Drew took a deep breath and he looked. <clears throat> I said Drew takes a deep breath and he looks. Hello? He takes a deep breath, he looks. He saw it! There, in the darkest corner of the bed, he saw the monster! Hey, Drew. Nice to meet you. I'm your bed monster. My what? Your bed monster. I live under your bed and stand guard, making sure you're always safe and sound. Huh. But it gets pretty lonely down here sometimes. You want to play video games? Yeah. So, Drew and his bed monster played games until the monster said, Drew? Whoa, you sound just like my dad. Drew, wake up. You're going to be late for school. Huh? Drew, why were you sleeping with your head under the covers? Drew looked around. He saw his monster fighting superhero suit, and he knew it wasn't just a dream. He had met a real life monster from under the bed. He was super cool, though, so that's nice. And the moral of the story, boys and girls, is don't be afraid of the dark. And if you find a monster under the bed, he's probably just bored and wants to play video games. Wow, it's the itsy bitsy Spider-Man. He's on patrol, looking for people who need help. First, he's visiting Humpty Dumpty. That's weird. He's usually sitting on this wall. Hmm. Let's go see the old woman who lives in the shoe. Her shoe house is all boarded up. Mrs. Shoe, are you in there? Nothing. Mysterious day in nursery rhyme land. Let's check out little boy Blue. Mm, I don't see him. I can't find Humpty Dumpty. I can't find the old woman who lives in the shoe. I can't even find little boy Blue. Where is everyone? This is a very strange day indeed. Something must be wrong. My spidey senses are tingling. Wait! That haystack is shaking. Go away! It's just me, Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man. Oh, okay then. Little Boy Blue, what's going on here? Everyone in Nursery Rhyme Land is missing. It's Peter Peter. He's having a tantrum. Oh dear, what happened? Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a wife and couldn't keep her. Yes, yes, we know that part. 
when he came home, his wife was gone. And well, he got upset because he couldn't find her. And then he started flying around on a leaf, throwing pumpkins at everyone. Oh, is that what all this orange goo is? Yes. Yuck. Ah, watch out. Here comes the pumpkin. Help. Somebody help. Look, it's the itsy bitsy Spider-Man. What have you done with my wife? How should I know? Whoa, close one. Looks like your crust is about to crumble. That's not even that funny. So then, Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man pointed past the goblin, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, and said, Hey, there's your wife right now. Peter Peter looked over his shoulder, turned his back to the Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man, which gave Spidey just enough time to spin a web around his feet and string him up in a tree. Safe and sound. Your pumpkin throwing days are over. And just then, from around the side of the tree, came Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater's wife. See, I told you not to worry. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. I told you I was having a lunch with Bo Peep. I see you every Saturday. Oh, yeah. Sum it all up in a rhyming fashion. Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a wife and couldn't keep her. Peter's wife went missing one morning, leaving the pumpkin without a warning. His temper couldn't have risen faster, turning the land into a disaster, throwing pumpkins at friends and kin until Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man came swooping in. He spun him up into a tree just in time for his wife to see. So at the end of the day, Peter Peter went back to being just a pumpkin eater. And Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man saved the day so all of Nursery Rhyme Land could laugh and play. Hey kids, get ready for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. Today, Drew must solve the case of the missing colors. It all started when Drew and Nikki were at cool school making decorations. Nothing unusual about that. Hey look, a giant rainbow. Cool. Tradition says there's a leprechaun's pot of gold at the end. Really? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's time for the stupendous stupendous and his mighty penultimate. And these lucky shamrock propeller beanies to fly us to the other side. Drew and Nikki flew up in the sky and followed the rainbow. Hey Drew, look, the rainbow's losing color. Oh, but there's the pot of gold. <gasps> oh no! Hey, me pot of gold turned into a pot of gray. You naughty kids did this. Us? No way! We were just going to see if there was really a pot of gold. If! Of course there is! Well, not anymore. Every St. Patrick's Day, some meddling kids come and try to take my gold. It wasn't us, we promise! Then how come you're gray too? Huh? Oh no! Drew and Nikki were all gray, and now so was the leprechaun, and all the trees, and the flowers, and the sky! It's like the color is being sucked out of everything! What's the matter, Drew? Feeling blue? Or should I say, feeling gray? <laughs> Who are you? Me? I'm Grace. Grace Kale. You know, like, gray scale. I'm like taking all your color and there is nothing you can do about it. Drew thought fast. What could he do? Just use your pen to draw back the color. Oh, cool idea. I don't think so. Uh-uh, Drew. Nice try. Okay, this is getting old. I gotta hit the source. I'm going for the color sucker. Why don't you just draw a hammer and smash the color machine like a piggy bank? Why draw a hammer when I can draw a huge hammer fist? Drew swung his big hammer fist to break open the color machine, but Grace was too fast. Ha, <laughs> you're stuck, Drew. Why don't you just like give up? Drew gave himself a pep talk. Okay, Drew, you're a tough guy. You fought your evil twin, defeated Jimmy Freeze, and saved the Eddies. But now you're stuck in the dirt, and as gray as your Aunt Edna's beehive. Drew, if you put her in slow motion, I can see how her color-sucking machine works. Then we can disable it for good. Good idea, Nikki. 
Drew made a slow-mo ray gun in the shape of a turtle, cause turtles are slow. Seriously awesome. Um, no, all your colors belong to me. Not so fast. Slow-mo ray gun? Hmm. It looks almost like a regular vacuum. I know, we need a huge hairball. I call it the Techno Color Turbo Clocking Hairbow Dust Bunny 5000. Nice! Oh no! Grace Kale's color vacuum sucked up the Techno Color Turbo Clocking Hairbow Dust Bunny 5000 and got totally clogged! Okay, Grace, we can do this the hard way or the easy way. That's where you just open your vacuum and give us our color back. You win! Oh, sorry. I'll deactivate the slow mo. You win this time, Drew. But I'll be back. Why do you want all our color anyway? Where I live, it's all black and white, and I saw that rainbow, and like, I wanted to bring it home. You can't just take a rainbow. No, but we can give her a little rainbow magic. After all, nobody should live in a colorless world. That's true, but then you'll scram. Um, duh. Thanks, Drew. Or, you know, whatever. Grace got her rainbow, and she went back to the land of gray. And the moral of the story, kids, don't take things that aren't yours. Share what you have and appreciate all the colors in your life. And please, don't try to take a leprechaun's gold. Hey there, kids. It's time for our brand spanking new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pet ultimate. In today's episode, Drew saves Cool School from himself. Wait, that can't be right. It was a totally normal day at Cool School. Nikki was just about to give her report on Valentine's Day, but... Hey, someone erased my wiki. I saw Drew do it. <gasps> Say what? Kids, Drew would never do anything like that. I didn't do it. Yeah, huh? I saw you. Except you were wearing a funny looking costume. This sounds fishy, kids. Time for recess. This would give Drew a chance to find the imposter who erased Nikki's wiki. But when he got to the playground, Drew found the swing sets, the slides, and the jungle gym were all gone! It's like they had been erased! Drew went back inside. There was Crafty Carol, and she did not look happy. Oh, there you are. Who, me? Drew, did you erase all of my crafting supplies? No way, I promise! Oh, thank goodness, I didn't think so, but someone said they saw you do it. <laughs> Hey, stop it right there, you faker! All of a sudden, kids came pouring out of the cafeteria. Yuck! Ew! Gross! The mysterious villain had erased the lunch menu and all the labels on the food. The lunch lady accidentally served up sloppy joes with grape jelly, onion slices, and cauliflower tacos with liver. Gross! But it's supposed to be pizza day! There he is! That's who done it! No way! I would never mess with pizza day! Then it dawned on Drew. Someone who looked like him was running around erasing everything. The opposite of drawing. It was like he had... An evil twin. My name is Ray. As an eraser. <laughs> You're the one who's been erasing stuff. Yeah, and now I'm gonna erase you. I don't think so, pal. <laughs> hey! What about this? Let's get ready to run. Give it up, Drew. There's nothing you can draw that I can't erase. Oh no, kids. Has Drew Pendus met his match? A bad guy he can't beat. No way. He can't beat me if he can't catch me. Drew used his super speed shoes to run down the hall and into the library. Miss Booksy, help. I need a book on how to send my evil twin back to his evil planet. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's one. <laughs> How to send your evil twin back to his evil planet. Perfect. Boogers! He erased all the pages. Aha! Enjoying your book. Oh, what do you want from me? I want chaos, craziness, destruction! <laughs> well, that's a silly answer. Yeah, what do you really want? I, I just want to be a student in cool school. Well, that makes sense. It is the best school in the universe. That's true. 
Where I came from, we only had cruel school. And it's not cool at all. Ray told him about cruel school, where everything was the opposite. Instead of good teachers, they had bad ones, like Krabby Carol. Stay away from my glitter. And Captain Hooksy, the cruel school librarian. She used to be a pirate, and now all the books are up to shreds. Arg. <laughs> all I want is to stay here with you guys. I'll be good, I promise. They actually considered it. After all, cruel school did sound terrible. But Drew saw that Ray had his fingers crossed behind his back. That's the universal sign that someone is fibbing. Don't worry, I saw that and I have a plan. Drew made a door to cruel school. Oh no, I dropped my penultimate and I rolled out the door. It's my pen now! <laughs> Kids, Ray has the mighty penultimate! Now I can draw whatever I want and take over the world! Hey, wait a second, this pen doesn't work. What's the matter, Ray? I'm drawing a blank. Have a nice day at cruel school, Ray. Yay! Whoa, how'd you do it? Simple. I could tell he really wanted my pen ultimate, so I drew a fake one that didn't have any ink. Ray won't be coming back to cruel school anytime soon. Well, we sure hope not. Anyway, the moral of the story, kids, don't go around erasing people's homework and never mess with Drew's pen ultimate. It's time for the adventures of Drew Pendus and his mighty pen ultimate. After being covered in magic ink, Drew gained the superpower to draw anything that he imagines and save the day. Good morning, class. Today we're talking about dinosaurs. Scientists have theories, but no one knows for sure how the dinosaurs disappeared all those millions of years ago. Wow! There was Drew in the land of the dinosaurs. He had to save the dinos from extinction. Then he saw it, a monster mega robot lizard from outer space. It was knocking over all the trees and freezing the oceans and rivers into ice. Brrr, it's freezing. The dinosaurs were not happy. Hey man, you're wrecking our planet. How are we supposed to live when you're turning everything into ice? Yeah, it, it, it's freezing. But the monster mega robot lizard didn't care. It just laughed like this. <laughs> and then it started to freeze the dinosaurs too. Even the Tyrannosaurus Rex was defenseless against it. There was nothing he could do. I give up. I need a blanket and some hot cocoa. Drew knew what he had to do. It's time for the stupendous stupendous as Mighty Pin Ultimate. I need the horns of a Triceratops, the wings of a Pterodactyl, the strength of a T-Rex. Wait, no, the arms are too short. Oh, and the super shield of metal with marbles that fly out. With my awesome new super suit, I'm ready to save the dinosaurs. First, Drew flapped his pterodactyl wings and flew towards a spaceship. He used his shield to deflect the ice coming from the monster robot alien. Back off, monster robot alien. I'm warning you. So Drew used his triceratop horns to break off the ice cannon. Then he shot the beams of ice back at the robot. Ah! Okay, time for the marbles. Whoa! And now to finish you off, I just need a super powerful arm. Bon voyage, you lousy robot! Drew, honey? Yeah, Mom? You need to clean your room. But mom, I'm kind of in the middle of saving the dinosaurs. Well, you should have thought about that earlier. Clean up this instant, young man. Ugh, okay, fine. Uh-oh. <laughs> and that, kids, is why there are no dinosaurs around today. Moral of the story, kids. Remember, clean your room before you start saving any dinosaurs. Hi kids, it's me, Miss Booksy, here at Cool School. Today we're gonna read Ba Ba Black Sheep, but this time I wanna see if you can read the words along with me. <laughs> Ready? All right, here we go. Gather round, get cozy, it's time for a nursery rhyme. This one's warm and fuzzy. Sure you're comfortable? All right, I'm starting now. <laughs> So there's this sheep, right? He's quite a cuddly animal, especially with his black woolly coat. And this sheep just happens to own a fancy wool shop where he sells expensive woolly stuff like hats and bags and mittens. 
One day, this very famous French designer comes in and says, Bonjour. That's French for hello. And the sheep looks all confused because he doesn't understand French. So the designer guy says, Oh, I mean, as he takes out his sheep dictionary. How do you say, Ah, oh, this is it. Baba, Baba black sheep, have you any wool? And he's asking this because he needs loads and loads of black wool because he's going to make fancy dresses for fancy ladies who do very fancy things. And the sheep says, Sorry, mate. Just sold my last three bags of black wool. He had sold one to Batman, who needed a woolen cape to keep warm at night when he's out busting the bad guys. Oh, so toasty. And one to a witch, who needed a sweater so she's not cold when she's flying around on her broom. <laughs> That's much better! And one to a little kid, who lives down the lane and has a peculiar fondness for the craft of knitting. Knit one, purl two, knit one, purl two, knit one, purl two, knit one, purl two. Awesome. But I just got a bunch of white wool out in the back and you can dye it black if you like. Merci, says the fashion designer. That means thank you in French. And off he goes to make his fancy dresses for fancy ladies. Look, he's happy as a lamb. So, if you need black wool or even rainbow wool for your little ponies, you can always rely on Ba Ba Black Sheep for all your woolly needs. And now it's time for the rhyming part. Ba Ba Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. One for the master and one for the dame and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. And there you have it, a warm and woolly nursery rhyme. Ba! I mean, bye bye until next time. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. This time, Super Drew must save the first day of school. Everyone was so excited for the first day of school. Miss Booksy had dusted off all her books, Crafty Carol had organized all her crafting materials, and Drew had all his art supplies ready to go. Markers, check. Crayons, check. Sketch pad, check. And of course, my mighty pin ultimate, check. Drew was on the bus, you know, the one where the wheels go round and round, when suddenly it screeched to a stop in front of the school. There was a mysterious flood, and the first day of cool school was canceled. Oh, no. Okay, lots of kids would be excited to have a day off, but this was the first day, the most exciting day, and it was cool school. Everybody loves cool school. So now everybody was sad, and the kids on the bus all cried. Wah! But not our Drew. I will save cool school. Oh, hold on. I need some sweet shark fins, a helmet with submarine sonar, and a supersonic jetpack. Okay, now I'll save cool school. Super Drew jetpacked right out of the bus, over the caution tape, and through a window. The mysterious flood was purple. Drew thought it looked familiar, so he tasted it. Mmm, it's grape juice. That's right, cool school was flooded with grape juice. It was gushing down the halls, right through Miss Books' library, filling up Crafty Carol's crafting center. There was grape juice everywhere. Drew dove into the juice and swam fast like a shark. He used his sonar to detect the source of the grape juice flood. It's coming from the cafeteria. But he was swimming, so it sounded like this. Drew swam to the cafeteria. Hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe millions of juice boxes had been stuffed into the fridge. There were too many. They were being squeezed too tightly. And you know what happens when you squeeze a juice box? It explodes like a geyser. Drew had an idea. He activated his jetpack and flew above the flood and yelled for backup. Crafty Carol! Oh yeah? Here, use this and get all the popsicle sticks from your crafting closet. Oh, cool! I always wanted a jetpack. And bring back Otavio, Simon P, and Ms. Booksy with you. I'll be right back. Drew sketched jetpacks for all the others, and then for himself, he drew a super awesome Sub-Zero freeze ray that also shoots lasers. Okay, everybody, when I say go, throw the popsicle sticks into the juice. Let's go. Ready. Okie dokie. Go. They all threw their popsicle sticks in different directions, and then, just as the sticks were falling into the flood of grape juice, Drew fired his Sub-Zero freeze ray and froze the juice. Then he shot a laser to cut them up into individual pops. They had turned a flood of grape juice into a thousand popsicles. 
Super Drew and the gang shared them all with the school kids who were waiting outside. Ew, this one has a fly in it. I'll take that. Mmm, delicious. Cool school was a bit sticky for a while, but the flood was gone. The first day of school was saved, thanks to stupendous Drupendous and his mighty pet ultimate. And of course, his trusty sidekicks. Moral of the story, kids. Sometimes even superheroes need a little help from their friends. Oh, and don't squeeze your juice boxes too tight. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft for you right here at Cool School. I hope you're excited because today we have an extra super craft for all you superheroes out there. We're making the number one most awesome superhero accessory, and that is we're making a jetpack. And the reason I'm making a jetpack today is because I got inspired by my buddy, Drew Pendis. He saves the first day of school and I don't know, he might just have a, a friend named Crafty Carol help him out. So what do you need to make this craft? Two large plastic bottles. I'm using large soda bottles. Tissue paper. I've got some orange and yellow here. Glue, some glitter, scissors, and duct tape. Okie dokie, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take those big soda bottles and we're gonna get them all glittered up. All right, so I got my two extra large soda bottles here. Put some glitter down here. We take our bottle here and we're gonna just cover it in glue and roll it in glitter. You gotta work fast so your glue doesn't dry while you're doing this. And let's just roll it around here. Well, that's looking pretty good. Check that out. Let's just get a little more glitter up top here. I like this part because it's kind of like we're making a snowstorm with glitter. Pretty awesome snowstorm. All right, so we got one of our bottles all glittered up nice and glittery and beautiful. And I'm just gonna let that dry. Let's do bottle number two. Okay, our second bottle is looking pretty awesome and jetpacky and superhero-y and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm just gonna let this one dry too. Next step is we're gonna make our flames that go out the, the back of the, the jetpack and propel you through space. I got one kind of big long strip of tissue paper here. I'm just gonna cut kind of some sort of triangles and zigzags. Just keep going and make it look like super awesome, crazy jetpack flames powered by jet fuel. Awesome. Kind of looks like giant teeth. <laughs> that was my impression of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, let's do some yellow flames now. I'm gonna double this up. I'm gonna do a bunch at once. And there you go with the yellow. And let's do this orange here. Next, we are going to put all these nice, super awesome flames together. And you're gonna need two bunches of flames because you got two different jetpack canisters. Got some yellow here, got some orange here, a dark orange, and you just layer them like that so you can see all the colors. And then I'm just gonna roll it up. There is our first bundle of Awesome jetpack flames. Let's do our other, roll this up. Okie doke, so now I'm just gonna take some tape here to secure the ends of that so it all sticks together. There we go, let's do this one too. Now look at that, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Alrighty, one of the next things we're gonna do is we're gonna make some straps because you gotta be able to strap on your jetpack, right? I got some tape here. I'm just gonna do one nice long strip here. I'm gonna double it up and we'll double it up going back that way. And so the end result, what you want is to have two sides of tape stuck together so that you've got the non-sticky part on both sides. Let's see, is that long enough to be my strap? Oh yeah, that's good, that's good. So let's do another one, measure them out to be the same length. And oh my gosh, I ran out of tape. Oh. It's okay though, because I have more. No big deal in the Crafty Carol crafting station. You might say, well, Crafty Carol, that purple tape doesn't match your yellow tape. And I'll just say, it's no big deal. 
Oh, what is a big deal is I'm getting it stuck everywhere except where I'm supposed to get it stuck. There we go. Now it's stuck in the right place. Alrighty. You got part purple, part yellow. Just for good measure to make a match. I have a little purple over here. So there we go. We got two cool straps for our jetpack here. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our two jetpack canisters here. So I'm gonna use some silver duct tape now. Slap them on there. Attach that. Come around here. Alrighty. And let's do one more strand of duct tape around there. And this time, I'm gonna take my strap here. I'm gonna just hold it down there. I'm gonna loop it around and then make it so it's like a circle. I'm just gonna hold that down with a little bit of tape there. And let's do our other strap. Make a nice loop here. And then we're gonna roll this tape through. This can get tricky because you got a lot of tape. But there you go. You kind of see it's pretty simple. You're just making your two loops and you're taping them down. Okay. Oh, this is looking pretty awesome. All right. So last step, we're gonna take our little our little flames here. It also kind of looks like pom poms if you're a cheerleader. And you see, see, you got your C, got your C. So I'm just gonna take this, stick it right there in the drink spout. Make sure it's nice and secure so when you're out there jetpacking all over the world, then uh, you won't have any troubles. Check it out. Da, 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 da. It's one awesome jetpack. me making a jetpack landing. There you have it, boys and girls. The most awesome, super duper superhero jetpack ever. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft for you right here at Cool School. Today's craft is extra super. It's actually super times three. That's right, we're making superhero notebooks. And because so many of you commented and asked for a Wonder Woman craft, I've got some extra special shout outs for the fans at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned. So what do you need to make this craft? It's pretty simple. I've got three notebooks, glue, scissors, a black marker, a pencil, and this colored foam from the crafting store. I got yellow, red, blue, and black. Uh-oh, I feel my crafty sense tingling. I hope yours is too, because it's time to start making this craft. So first thing we're gonna do is our Superman logo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this red foam and I'm just gonna sketch the Superman logo onto it. So there you see. I had to use my phone, I had to look at You know, sometimes Crafty Carol can't remember every superhero logo that ever was and just draw it off the top of her head. I mean, come on, what do you think? I got like a brain of a dolphin in here? They're very intelligent. I'm gonna take this black marker. All right, so I'm gonna outline this in black. Okie dokie, now we're gonna cut this out. Ooh, it's looking cool. As you know, cutting the stuff out of the middle is always a harder part. That's why I pinch it and then I make a little, there you go, make a little slit inside. I think it's good to have a parent help you with this part. Pieces of food, I'll get rid of those. One last little piece. Oh my gosh, this is the hardest one of all. It's so tiny. Whose idea was this? So, I've got some yellow foam here. I'm just gonna glue the red onto the yellow and then we're gonna cut it out. Oh, but I've got marker all over my hands. Oh man, I have a fancy event later. Oh well, that's just the price of being a crafter. Okay, now we're all glued up. Pop that down. Just wipe my glue down here. <laughs> Good thing I wore my napkin pants. You don't know about napkin pants? Oh my gosh, napkin pants are pants that you wear that are basically just napkins. You eat a messy snack or you get glue on your hands and you just... Good thing I wore my napkin pants. All right, so that is all glued down. Looking pretty good. All right, so I'm just gonna let that dry. 
Now let's get to work on our Wonder Woman notebook. So I'm gonna use this size notebook for my Wonder Woman. I'm gonna cover the front and back of the notebook in this red. Let's go ahead and trace the covers. And just snip along where you traced. Line that up. Let's glue this baby down. I was feeling glue crazy. I was glue happy. Alright, and just smudge that down there. Time for napkin pants. Now don't just go wiping glue and glitter on your regular pants. They have to be real, actual napkin pants. Okay, maybe I'm just gonna trace for the other side here. And let's just cut out our other notebook cover. A little less than straight. There we go. Alright, ooh, now yeah, cool. That's awesome. We have a big T, so that you can have that if your name starts with a T. Tanya, Tiana, Han, Teffrey, Tobert, Tabby, Terrell. And let's just glue our other little guy down. Okie dokie. And now I'm gonna make my Wonder Woman crest. So I've got my yellow here. Actually, what would my superpower be? Maybe I could throw glitter at the bad guys. Knock them off that way. Let's just trace this in black. Let's cut this baby out. Wonder Woman has an invisible jet. Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. I'd be flying all over the place. No one would even know. So now we're just gonna glue this onto this. Let's go back to our Superman. I'm gonna cut that out. Little side note here, I got this blue binder. I thought this would be perfect for our Superman. We're just gonna look at that. We're just gonna, we're just gonna slide it right in there. Okay, so, ooh, almost done, almost. All right, so now we're on to our third and final superhero notebook of the day. Now we're gonna make a Batman notebook and I'm gonna use this tiny little guy right here. So, I am gonna do some yellow on the front. And this time, yeah, I'm just gonna do two. Let's cut these babies out. And let's glue these down. And let's just merge this other one on there. We gotta make, we gotta make the bad symbol. Alright, it's a pretty good looking bat there. Alright, so let's just cut out this bat. Okay, so uh, we have our Batman. Na, 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 Batman. I sang it really tiny because it's so tiny. Alright, and just a little glue, not too much. Are you ready to see the notebooks that we made for today's craft? Start with our Superman. Da, 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 da. And then we've got our little Batman yeah! notebook that we just made. This one you can just keep in your pocket and write down all kinds of notes, you know, as you think of them when you're on the school bus and you're just like, oh right, this that, that's a great idea. Invention, Ooh. napkin pants. And then we have our yeah! Wonder Woman craft. I love this notebook. Oh my gosh. It's just one of my most favorite notebooks of all time, ever. Oh, it's like a little family of notebooks, oh my gosh. It's like Superman and Wonder Woman got married and then had, for some reason, a little bat baby. I don't know what happened there, but it's adorable. So, that's it, check it out. It's pretty much gonna be the most super kid at school with these notebooks. People are gonna be like, hey, where'd you get those notebooks? And you're gonna be like, I made them. They're gonna be like, made them? How? And you're gonna be like, Crafty Carol told me how. And then they're gonna be like, Crafty Carol, who's that? Where can I watch? And you're gonna be like, cool school on YouTube. They're gonna come, they're gonna watch these videos, and they're gonna be like, wow. And I'm gonna be like, hey, you guys, I'm gonna show you how to make some crafts. Glad you're here. My cool school project is all about superheroes. Superheroes are awesome for like a million reasons, but mostly because they have superpowers. Some have super strengths. Some can fly, or go invisible, or read minds. Some superheroes are super fast, and some superheroes are just super duper smart. So, where do they get their powers from? Well, some superheroes come from other planets, like Guardians of the Galaxy. 
Some are mutants like X-Men. Some are radioactive like Spider-Man. Some are built like Baymax and Iron Man. And some get their powers from their parents like the Incredibles. Whole families of superheroes. A lot of people know superheroes because they're famous and in movies and stuff. But they're also really easy to spot because they wear costumes. Superhero costumes usually have a cape or a symbol, or they have underwear on the outside of their pants. I don't know what's so super about that. A lot of superheroes have secret identities or a special disguise, so no one knows their superhero secret. Sometimes my grandpa wears glasses when he's reading, but the rest of the time he doesn't need them. Maybe he's a secret superhero. I'm bopping away! Oh, my back! One thing every superhero needs is an arch nemesis. That means major enemy. Superman versus Lex Luthor, Spider-Man versus the Green Goblin, and Batman versus the Joker. Sometimes the superheroes team up and fight the bad guys together. Pow! Wham! Crush! Maybe instead of fighting, they should just talk to each other. Hey, I like your costume! Thanks! Superheroes are the good guys, but sometimes they have a bad day. Sometimes real life people are heroes. Even kids can be heroes. I think sometimes just doing something nice for somebody makes you a hero. To sum it up, superheroes are super cool and I want to be one when I grow up. My superpower would be invisibility, so I can sneak in the kitchen and take cookies whenever I want. Or maybe super speed, so I could just run in really fast and take them and run away. Flying would be cool too. Then I could just fly around taking cookies whenever I wanted them. So, who's your favorite superhero? Tell us in the comments.